In this video, we are going to test whether a lever nut or a wire nut is better whenever it's subjected to vibrations like we're going to experience in a camper van, an RV, or a boat. So I've built this thing and we're gonna test it. I have an oscillating multi-tool right here in the middle and two three pound dumbbells on each side. I'm going to strip back the insulation and connect these wires to this side and same on this side. On one side, I'm going to be using this wire nut. And on this side, I'm going to be using this lever nut. Got all my 14 gauge wires connected to the lever nut on this side. Visually inspected it through the back so I can tell that all the wires are in there nice and neat. And the wire nut over on this side. Uh, I can't really visually inspect it, but I give those a little tug to make sure that they're good to go. I've got my weights over here on the side. We're gonna put these, hang off, let these hang off the front. Set up a stopwatch for one minute, just the number I kind of picked out. And we're going to test it. We're gonna test it three times uh, to see what happens. And start. First test, uh, both of them held, which I'm actually kind of surprised at. Um, lever nut doesn't look like it's slipped at all. Um, it's hard to tell. I don't want to touch that because it makes me nervous. Uh, but we're going to run it for an additional minute. Oh. <laughs> I fell asleep. Um, so Nothing again, so I'm still super impressed. But you know, we're gonna do it one more time for our three minutes. Okay, that's the third test. And we have no failures, which like I said, pretty, uh, pretty impressed with. So we're going to uh, modify this and make it a little bit more extreme, if you will. I moved the oscillating multi-tool on its side so that the blade's going up and down now. So it's kind of uh, jumping instead of just going back and forth. And I think we'll just do the same thing. Three tests, one minute each. <laughs> ah. Okay, our, our one minute is up and uh, it's kind of fun to see how, um, how the wires react depending on how fast this is going. But uh, still did not have a failure, so same spirit as earlier, and can do it again. Okay, that's the second minute. Still no failure. Uh, we're not getting any movement from this one, and I don't think we're getting any movement from this one as well. I don't see anything from the back side, so. Still good to go there, it looks like. Okay, last minute. Okay, that was our third minute. Um, no failures. So we're going to modify this yet again to see how we can actually get a failure because I have to have a failure for this video. So we'll figure it out, we'll be right back. So what we're going to do is take this, put it back uh, the other direction, and then there's a hole in the top of this blade. And the ABYC standard for testing wire pull strength is the wire needs to be pulling along the axial direction of the connector. So that's going to be like this with the wire coming straight down. So we are going to flip this uh, and make it so that these wires aren't coming in at an angle and they're just coming straight down into the connector. So I've remade this so that the wire with the weight on it is coming straight down uh, pretty, pretty much right out of the wire nut. And then this wire is just coming off to the side and is just basically taking up space. Um, there's really not a way to just put, you know, one wire inside of a wire nut. I mean, you can do it, but that's never how you're going to use it. So we didn't want to test it like that. So uh, same test as before. I'm going to do this a couple times, uh, one minute each time.
Okay, first minute and no failure. And I don't think I wanna do this two more times uh, with just having no failure. So let's go ahead and up the ante and we're going to put an additional weight onto this one, see how it goes. And now we're at six pounds, same one minute test. Okay, and that's six pounds for one minute along the axial direction of the wire net and still no failure, which I am super surprised at. So, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> now that we've done this test with this wire nut, uh, I'm just gonna take this apart and we're gonna replace it with the lever nut. Uh, but I also kinda wanna check it out and see what it looks like after that abuse. So it doesn't look like there's really any kind of broken strands or anything like that. Uh, the fact that you know, all these strands are kind of just twisting together is definitely making uh, this connection, you know, physically stronger, but uh, that's what that's looking like. So we're going to go ahead and strip this back and put a lever nut in its place. Then we can kind of visually inspect and see that there is plenty of copper uh, coming all the way up into the top of the lever nut. So we're just gonna let that hang out there. We're gonna cut one of the dumbbells off to make it a fair test and then start our one minute timer. Okay, one minute is up. Kind of cool because we can actually visu visually inspect this one and see that there's been no slippage. So we're going to add three more pounds of weight onto this and do it again. So we've got six pounds now and we're going to one minute on the clock. Test it out. And there's our one minute. Does not look like there's been any slippage on that either. So that's six pounds onto the wire in the direction of the actual connection straight down. This is held up too. So let's talk about this test. So what does this test mean? Well, it's kind of inconclusive for this particular test, which I kind of hate. I really wanted to see some failure. You know, I thought that the uh, the wire nuts were definitely going to fail, well period, but fail sooner than the uh, lever nuts. And we talked about it, Steph and I and Grace, we just kind of like brainstormed, like how could we, you know, find out where that failure point is. And we tossed around the idea of putting that same test onto like a reciprocating saw to where the vibration is just even more aggressive. We talked about adding more weight to the bottom of the, uh, the wire, but we felt like both of those I uh, kind of got away from the real life testing and so we thought that that wasn't really relevant. So yeah, ultimately I think this test is pretty inconclusive. I think if we were going to do it again, and we may do this later on down the road, we would set up like a vibration plate and then have the same setup and then let it run for however long it takes. One minute, one hour, one day, one week, and just see how long it takes for uh, one of these to fail. But we don't have that equipment with us uh, at this time, so that's gonna have to wait till a different day. Now, my thoughts about the test. Even though the wire nuts didn't fail, I still don't like them. They're harder to actually put on. Uh, you can't visually inspect them like you can with a lever nut. I can put one of these on consistently every single time, and even whenever I was making that setup that we were testing on, I messed up the wire nut. The wire just came out. So something has to be consistent before it can be repeatable and like usable every single time. And I just don't think that wire nuts are the solution. Now this is also just one test. ABYC, they actually specifically forbid wire nuts, these twist on style wire nuts, because they've had issues with them in the past. ABYC has had years and years and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of boats that they've had issues with and they've been able to pinpoint issues to this particular thing. So I still can't recommend them. Now, a lot of RVs just off the dealership parking lot have these in them. And I think this test can go to say that, you know, it's not necessarily worth going out and trying to change all of your wire nuts to lever nuts in your OEM RV. If they're there from the factory, then it's probably fine. But if you're going to be upgrading something and putting new equipment in or making these upgrades, maybe go for something that you can consistently put on in the uh, proper manner that you can visually inspect. And that's pretty much the test and my thoughts about how the test went. 
and I hope you found it useful. We'll see you next time.